Good morning all. Another update to my PIC microcontroller tutorials and this is an update to uh, tutorial number two where we got this LED to flash on and off. So in that tutorial we got the LED to flash on and off but it was asymmetric. It was on for a shorter period than it was off. Now that was fixed in update 2.1 by putting two no ops after switching the LED on and the go to after switching it off balances this loop because two no ops is two instruction cycles and a go to is also two instruction cycles. So here's the pick instruction set and we can see that uh, here's the no op no operation and it's one instruction cycle or what I've called an FOSC over four cycle because these cycles occur at a quarter of the frequency of the main oscillator. Uh, but you can see that go to here, go to address, is two of these cycles. So two no ops gives you a two cycle delay and a single go to, which we need, we can't get rid of that go to because we've got to jump back to the beginning of the loop, also gives us a two cycle delay. And so the LED flashes on and off with complete symmetry. Now you might think that a no op, because it doesn't do anything, you can understand why it only takes one cycle, but most of the instructions in the PICS instruction set only take one cycle, including things like uh, subtraction and exclusive all, the logical operations, and ands and adds. In fact, if you study this instruction set, you'll see that it's only the branches that take two machine cycles, two instruction cycles. Uh, these decrement and skip, increment and skip, these two here, which is bit test and skip, and skip is a branch. Uh, call, that's a branch. Go to is a branch. The three returns are also branches. So in fact, it's only branches that take two machine cycles. Why is that? Well, it has to do with instruction pipelining. Now, hey Google, what's instruction pipelining? According to Wikipedia, instruction pipelining is a technique that implements a form of parallelism called instruction level parallelism within a single processor. Yes, that's right. Instruction level parallelism. But what's that? Well, in reality, all of these instructions take two machine cycles, but they're actually overlapped. So they only appear to take one machine cycle. Let me draw a diagram of that. So let's take something simple like clear W, which just simply resets or clears all the bits in the W register. What's the process we have to go through? Well, first, we have to go and get the instruction from program memory. Here's the instruction. It's uh, five zeros, a one, a zero, and then lots of don't cares. So here's program memory. It's uh, one killer word of program memory. So 1024 uh, words, and the words are 14 bits wide. So we pull that instruction out of program memory. Which location? Well, the location pointed to by the program counter. So that comes out and goes into the instruction register. Then we have to decode that instruction. So how is that instruction decoded? Well, firstly, we can look at these first two bits. Um, they're all zero, zero in this first block. So it's definitely a byte oriented, uh, oriented file register operation. Um, it's not one of these other ones. Then we look at, where is it, clear W, yes, it's, it's a 0001, so that defines um, that it's a clear. Then we've got this D bit, so if it's a 1, we're clearing a file. If it's a 0, well, actually, we're clearing a file, but we're putting the result in W, and, of course, the file that we're clearing is irrelevant. And because we're putting the result in W, we're not actually clearing the file. In fact, clear F and clear W are the same instruction, just with the D bit changed. So the first part of clearing W is to pull the actual instruction out of program memory and decode it. The second part of clearing W is actually to reset all the bits in the W register. And that can only be done by writing to the W register on the data bus. So this is done in two steps. In the first step, we decode the instruction. Let's draw it as, well, let's draw it as a little box. In the second step, and this will happen in the next mach next machine cycle, so I'll draw another box like that. 
we actually reset all the bits in the W register. So this actually takes two clock cycles. If I draw the clock cycles in, the first clock cycle is where we pull the instruction out of program memory and decode it. In the second clock cycle, we actually write a whole bunch of zeros to the W register. This takes two clock cycles. Now I said clock cycles, and of course I mean machine cycles or F OSC over four cycles. Um, interestingly, in the AVR core processors, microcontrollers, uh, what used to be Atmel but is now microchip, it's actually done at clock cycle rate. The AVR core has the amazing ability to execute and decode uh, instructions actually at clock frequency. It's very interesting and not entirely sure how it does it. Uh, but that's not the case with the PIC. The PIC is actually a much older architecture. It dates back, I think, to the 1970s. Um, but yes, it only decodes and executes instructions at a quarter of the clock frequency. So from this diagram, we can see that to clear the W register actually takes two machine cycles. The first one to fetch the instruction from program memory and the second machine cycle to actually execute it. In other words, to write all zeros into the W register. Why then does the data sheet for the PIC tell us that doing a clear W actually only takes one machine cycle? Well, that's because of the pipelining. If we now do another clear W, we can fetch that second instruction in the second machine cycle and execute it in the third. So we have that. The processes are overlapped. So for the first clear W, we fetch the instruction in the first machine cycle, but execute it in the second machine cycle. For the next clear W, the next instruction in program memory, we actually fetch that instruction in the second cycle and execute it in the third. In that second cycle, we're executing the first instruction, but fetching the next one at exactly the same time on the same clock edge. So how are we able to fetch an instruction from memory and execute the previous instruction at the same time? Well, it's because this CPU, this microcontroller, has a Harvard architecture. Hey Google, what's a Harvard architecture? According to Wikipedia, the Harvard architecture is a computer architecture with physically separate storage and signal pathways for instructions and data. Now the Harvard architecture separates the program bus from the data bus. There's the program bus, it's 14 bits wide. There's the data bus, it's 8 bits wide. We can fetch an instruction on that program bus at exactly the same time as we can put data out on the data bus to fill the W register with zeros. The two, thing ha two things happen at exactly the same time. So although the clear W instruction actually takes two machine cycles to fetch and execute, you can overlap them so they appear to execute every machine cycle. However, this mechanism has a problem with branches. So in the first machine cycle, the instruction is fetched. In the second machine cycle, that first instruction is executed and the next instruction is fetched. What if this instruction here is a go-to? We fetch the go-to but at the very same time as executing it, we fetch the next instruction. But a go-to says jump to a completely different position in program memory. So the next instruction is actually irrelevant and it's thrown away. So pipelining works fine for instructions other than branches. If your code is full of a load of branches, then you're breaking the pipelining. It's called the branch penalty. And if your program is entirely branches, then you gain nothing from this pipelining. So if you have a RISC microcontroller with pipelining and a Harvard architecture, there is an incentive not to use branches. And uh, in a later uh, tutorial, I will show uh, an example of a program written with minimal branches versus, versus one that has uh, lots of branches in it. Uh, you'd only do this if you were trying to do something at extreme high speed, but there is a penalty for using branches. Now, your program is likely to have a setup section and a loop section, and a loop generally needs a go-to or some mechanism to get back to the beginning of the loop. 
So you can't completely eliminate branches. You're, you're going to have a go-to somewhere in your program. So I hope that that helps to explain why the branch instructions take two machine cycles, call, uh, go to, and the three returns. Now, now these four instructions here, which are marked one brackets two, take one instruction if the result is one outcome, and they take two instructions if the result uh, results in a branch. So here, for example, bit test file and skip if clear. If the result was clear, or if the bit was clear, then we do skip. And because of the skip, which is a branch, it takes two machine cycles. If it wasn't clear, if it was set, then we don't skip. And then it takes one machine cycle. Uh, just in case you're wondering what a skip is, a skip is a branch, but it, but it just jumps one instruction. So if we say skip at this point, it would skip this intermediate instruction and jump straight to the next one. So hopefully that explains why no ops take one machine cycle and a go to takes two and why we've had to put two no ops in and one go to to symmetricalize the flashing of this LED. Cheerio.